Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Thanks for coming back for the March 2024 monthly update of our Tesla solar panels and power wall system. The sun is shining in abundance here in springtime and I thought it'd be a great time to highlight one of my favorite features of the Tesla ecosystem, which is charge on solar, allowing your car to drive purely on sunshine. We'll take a look at that and the data as always, keep on watching. Tesla, kind of like Apple, plays well together in its own ecosystem, and one of these benefits is charge on solar. Utilizing a Tesla EV, your Tesla solar panels, and a power wall, you can actually send only excess solar electricity to your vehicle so that you can essentially drive on sunshine. Here's a little video I made about it. So what are the basics of charge on solar? Let's go over it. You're gonna need a couple different things to utilize charge on solar. One of those being solar panels, obviously. Two being a power wall, and the power wall is a requirement. Three being a Tesla EV. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on non-Tesla EVs. You can use any three, any Y, and model S and X 2021 model year or newer. The 2020 and previous do not work. You're gonna want them to be on the most updated firmware, which generally isn't a worry because anything being delivered in 2024 here is going to have that charge on solar feature activated. You're also going to want these to be in the same account. Now, one of the most common questions that I usually get is, what EVSE do I have to use to charge my car to utilize charge on solar? And it actually doesn't matter which EVSE you use. We use a seven year old charge point home unit that I've had for forever. Essentially, this is between the car and the power wall controlling all the data between the house and the car and then charging using that excess solar. So it doesn't matter what EVSE you use. Now, you're going to have the app on your energy side should have a pop-up for charge on solar. If you don't see that, try logging out and logging back in. When I've had issues with that, that's made it reappear. Once you click on that, it's gonna ask for your home location, and this is just to make sure that it's only utilizing charge on solar when you're parked at home, not when you're, say, at a public charging station. Now, beyond that, it's going to look a little bit different than you're used to with the charging slider bars. You're used to only seeing one slider and that just being your end you know, charging percentage, whether that's 70, 80, 90%. But now you're gonna see two of those. The first charging slider is your set to any amount, you know, 50, 30, 60, whatever percent you want. And basically your char car will charge no matter what, using full power up until that set percent. Let's say it's 50%. Now you're gonna see that second slider, and that area between that first slider and that second slider is the charge on solar amount. Essentially, that percentage, say if you set it to 90%, that 40% of your battery is only going to be charged with excess solar. So, how does it work? It works with any 240 volt, and with 120 volt um, connection essentially, it will go all the way up to whatever your EVSE can handle and your solar panels can handle. We have a 32 amp charge point home and our solar panels go up to about 11 kilowatts. So essentially we can get a full 32 amps at 240 volts for charge on solar. Um, you could also just plug it into 120 volt, you know, 12 amp and utilize charge on solar that way. The only caveat being is that you can't have two charge on solar vehicles going at the same time. It only works for one vehicle at a time. Now you've got everything set up, what will it look like in your app? It's going to look similar to if you have a newer generation 3 or a uh, wall connector or universal wall connector. Um, for us without one it wouldn't show up otherwise. But now you're going to see the car parked in the garage in the energy side of the app. Um, if it's active, if charge on solar is active, if charge on solar is not active, like for us without a non or with a non Tesla 
wall connector, it just goes back to the normal house. Now, it's going to look at excess solar and your house load, and then that difference is what it sends to the car. It pulls this data every 10 seconds or so, so you may see a lag in the data. Say if a cloud goes by and your production goes way up, or a cloud goes by and your production goes way down, you may see that it's drawing from the power wall a little, you may see that it's sending back to the grid a little bit. That's completely normal. It's pulling every 10 seconds, just obviously I think they don't want it to be too often so that it's constantly fluctuating, but it's enough that generally you're going to keep most of it behind the grid as much as possible. And at the same time, you don't have to do anything. You, you know, previously without this, you'd have to constantly be going into the app, adjusting the amperage down. If something was changing, the sun's going down. So this does it all automatically and makes it super easy. And what I just love about this is that I can plug my car in and as long as I'm above that set per, that lower set percentage, I just know that like if there is any excess, it's going to go into the car. I don't have to worry about sending that back to the electric, you know, the grid um, where I'm going to get paid five cents per kilowatt hour for it and it's not really efficiently used, you know, especially if I draw it back from the grid later. This way we're keeping a lot of our use behind the grid and that's the way I want to keep it because we're just not going to be compensated that much for it and especially with the new net energy metering programs you're really not going to be compensated that much for it so you might as well utilize all your solar as much as you can behind the grid it contributes to helping with the duct curve especially if you're able to charge during the day all that excess solar electricity that the electrical company has to deal with in the middle of the day this way it's going to a big battery and then you can utilize that more you know, efficiently. So I think it's a win-win all around. I really, really enjoy Charge On Solar and think it's a great, great feature. I hope you also enjoy it. Now let's take a look at the data. March is a fun month here because we're basically into that sweet spot where we have solar production increasing exponentially and our house usage isn't really following. Now it's not cold enough to stop using the heat, but it's also not hot enough to start using the AC. You can start opening the windows a little bit here. Um, so our usage for the house is going to stay relatively low, kind of similar to the winter months. It won't quite approach the summer month usage until you know May or June-ish once it gets much hotter. Now looking at the data for house usage in February of 2024 here, we used 874.4. In March, that was up to 962.0. What's important to see here is that gray of grid use is essentially gone in March. And you know, for March, those grid use numbers really are just charging days. It's times where I think we might have had like one weather day where we used the grid and I had a backup set. But other than that, it's just for charging the car when I didn't want to utilize the power walls. So we're at 37% grid in February, down all the way to 9% grid in March. Gotta love seeing those numbers not using the grid anymore. That'll really help in terms of net grid use. Now, historically, March, uh, we used 704.4 kilowatt hours in 2022, up to a over a megawatt hour in March of 2023, 1,036.4, which looks like a lot of charging there, basically, um, with some you know excessive grid use in a day, almost up to 100 kilowatt hours. And then March 2024, a little bit under a megawatt hour at 962.0 kilowatt hours. It's about 30 kilowatt hours on average per day, which I consider normal use here. Again, in March, we're going to start producing a lot more electricity here. So I'm not worried about the little bit of creep up in electric, uh, electricity use because we're going to produce a lot more than we use now, finally. Now you might remember in January, we produced around 480 kilowatt hours. And in February, that almost doubled to 777 kilowatt hours. In March, we're almost tripling that January number to 1,379.8 kilowatt hours. 
we've got the longer days of springtime. The sun is starting to get more perpendicular up in the sky to our panel. So we're just producing a lot more energy, which is awesome because we can start to utilize charge on solar to, you know, use all that excess electricity uh, behind the meter here. Now, Historically, I think March 2022, again, was just a banner year for solar. We were at 1560.2 kilowatt hours. March 2023, as you can see, had you know a bit of weather there, 1311 kilowatt hours. And March 2024 was kind of the middle of that with the you know seven to 10 days of weather, which produced you know roughly 20 or 30 kilowatt hours instead of our peak of around 60 kilowatt hour of those days at 1379.8 kilowatt hours. Now, April, you can expect to see another large increase again. It may not be the doubling that we've seen, you know, in the past, but basically we're going to look at close to two megawatt hours for April in a good month. So you can expect to produce even more going into June here. And that's pretty awesome. Now, for the past couple months, we've been watching Powerwall usage kind of trend downwards, but I'd say March is the month of the Powerwall because we're finally starting to produce enough to fill our Powerwalls up to 100% no matter what. In February, with weather and other stuff going on, I still generally keep the system at 60-40 split um, so that we'd have some backup with weather going on, or if we had a low production day, we'd still have a reserve. But in March... We're no longer averaging that 25 to 30 kilowatt hours of production, and we're looking at about 45 kilowatt hours of production. So keep in mind, we have three power walls, which is 40.5 kilowatt hours of storage. We have enough essentially on most days to just fill up those power walls from empty to full. Now we're not doing that. You can see the monthly usage at 420 kilowatt hours is about an average of 13 to 14 kilowatt hours per night, which is only one of our three power walls. And that's why I can just run it zero to 100% or 100% self powered, 0% backup. And even if we have a rainy day, kind of like today, it doesn't matter because on average, we're going to only use about 30 to 35, maybe 40% on a heavier day of those power walls overnight. So we can go two days without you know, having a great sunny day and we're still gonna not need the grid as much. So the power walls are gonna get used here in March um, just because that production is up and we're pretty much off the grid unless we need to charge the car a huge amount and I don't wanna use the power wall. Now, Looking at the numbers historically, March 2022 discharged 374.1 kilowatt hours. 2023, as we saw, there's a bit more weather, and I must have set it to 100% yeah, backup, I'm guessing, because it was 291.3 kilowatt hours. And March 2024, I'm finally comfortable with it, and let's just run this thing wide open until October or November. So we're at 421.7 kilowatt hours. So power walls are going to get used a lot more now. They're really going to, you know, hopefully during the summer, we're going to try and run them as much as we can, you know, from zero to 100% with a virtual power plant. So they're just kind of hitting their stride here. So let's take a look at the net grid use numbers. March net grid use numbers, springs in the air, the electricity is flowing back to the grid, life is good. February 2024, we had net imported 141.5 kilowatt hours. March 2024, we're at 338.8 kilowatt hours. So we're exporting uh, you know, about 11 kilowatt hours per day to the grid. That's amazing. We're finally off the grid usage. I wait for this month every year because, you know, if I was getting nervous about how close we were with our true up yearly statement that runs April to April, we're finally kicking a little bit back in. But again, we should have nothing to worry about here for the year. Now, historically, March 2022, banner year, exported 783.3 kilowatt hours back to the grid in March 2023 was a bit more of a normal month. 221.6 kilowatt hours exported to the grid. We used a bit in the middle of the month there that's kind of abnormal, um, but that was uh, apparently the backup reserve being set to 100%. And in March 2024, really didn't utilize the grid too much, just a little bit of the 60-40 at the beginning of the month. Um, 
and then that backup, I should say, and then just exporting for the whole rest of the month. So we exported 338.8 for the month of March. Great month here. Um, we'll see hopefully a lot better numbers too for exporting in April. We'll just have to check it out. Hope you enjoyed the March 2024 monthly update here. As always, if you need a referral link so you can get $500 off your solar panel, solar roof, or power wall order, make sure to use my referral link down below. Or if you wanna add a Tesla EV so that you can utilize charge on solar, make sure to use my link down below. I think it gets you three months of full self-driving. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.